Hi, I'm Jean Boone from the Central Branch of the Howard County Library System. Thanks for joining me today for Preschool Parade. This is a class designed for ages two to five, and I'm going to share some songs and rhymes and stories today that help build school readiness skills. As you can see, this class is pre-recorded, which means, sadly, I can't see your smiling faces out there. But the good news is that you can pause this recording anytime you need to take a break, and you can go back to your favorite parts and play them over and over again. So let's get started today with a hello song to greet each other. I've got the words right beside me. It's very simple, and we're going to sing it with our voices and with our hands using the American Sign Language. So let me show you what those signs are. Hello looks like this. Put your hand to your forehead and salute out. For friends, take your two pointer fingers and let them give each other a hug. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time, tap your wrist, or you might wear a watch, to say, tap your chin and pull out, hello. That's all there is to it. Are you ready to start? Let's try singing it together twice. Here we go. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Hello. Thanks again for being with me today in this way. I wanted to share things with you today all about the color green. Why green? Well, it's my favorite color, but also because spring is coming. It's almost here and this is the time when things start to look green outside. Hooray, that makes me happy. So um, as an early learning tip for the grownups out there, I, learning to identify colors is an important and challenging task for children. And by using color words when you are describing something, you can help children learn to understand all the kinds of green and blue and red are, that are out there in the world. And by sorting things by color, you can help them build not only their color identification skills, but also their classification, classifying skills, which is an important foundation for math as well. So let's give that a try right now with some things I gathered around my house. You can sort things like Lego blocks by color or crayons by color, or just things that you find. So I found a box. What color is my box? It's green, yes. And so I thought all the things that are green, we will put into the green box, okay? So here are the things I found, like an apple. Is this apple green? No, it's red, right. So it won't go in our box, but look at this apple. This is also an apple and it's green. Apples come in lots of colors, so the green apple can go in the box. What about this piece of fruit? What is it? An orange. So is an orange green? No, an orange, of course, is orange. We'll leave that there. Do you know what this is? This is a lime. What color is it? It is very green. Limes are usually green. We'll put this in the box. And let's see, I found this little creature, my puppet friend. Do you know what this is? It's a little turtle. What color is my turtle? Hmm, it doesn't really look like the lime or the apple, but this is green too. It's a very dark green. So the turtle can go in the box. But what about this baby deer, can he go in the box? Nope, brown and white is what his color is. We'll leave him right here. Ah, this is a maraca, it's noisy. What color is it? It's got a bunch of different colors on it, but none of them seem to be green. And I think it could, could be in this little cup. It looks greenish. Let me take a closer look. Oh, 
It is green and it is also slimy. Oh, it's green slime. Do you see how gooey it is? And it is a very glowing green. So I think I want to put that in my box, but not just this, not loose, right? I'll put it back in its cup with a lid. And then the green slime can go in the green box. Well, good job. I think we got all the green things into our green box. Now, the things we saw like this apple that is green, th these are things that are already green. But what if you wanted to make green? Can we make green? Where does green come from? Well, I wanted to show you a book you can request from the library, a classic called Little Blue and Little Yellow. It's by Leo Leone. And it's about two friends, friends who are dots. There's the blue dot and the yellow dot. And one day when they got together, they gave each other a big hug and they turned green. Can you believe it? Well, even though this is a story, that is actually scientifically true. Blue and yellow, when put together, make green. Would you like to see how that works? We can, we can do an experiment to show that that's true. I have some water here. It just has some food coloring in it. So this is something you can try at home. Color mixing is a great way to talk about colors. I have some water that is what color? Yellow and some water that is blue. And if you, let's see, lids on really tight. If you hold them up, we look at them together, we can see that separately, we can see their colors. But if you look through them together, do you see how they've changed? And they are, it looks green when the light passes through both the blue and the yellow. And what if we pour them together? Let's try that. I'm gonna take a little bit of the blue and pour it into this empty tube. All right. And now I'm going to add a little yellow. And what color do we now have in our tube? Green, yes, it's a beautiful green. So that is one way to make green. Put blue and yellow together. I hope you can have some fun trying that at home with water. So green is an important color in the month of March. Do you know why? Well, for one thing, we celebrate St. Patrick's Day on March 17th. And that's a celebration of Irish culture. And one of the traditions is to wear green like a leprechaun and maybe to search for shamrocks, which are kind of like lucky clovers. Now, we also have the first day of spring coming in March on the 21st. So we know the weather's going to get warmer and green things are going to start growing and animals might come out from their warm winter hiding places and you might see some bunnies hopping around or some butterflies fluttering around. All kinds of wonderful things happen, start to happen in the month of March. So I have a rhyme I'd like to share with you that involves some counting. And it's about all of these green and springy things that are happening in March. Now, let me get ready. We're going to start this counting rhyme, not with the number one. We're gonna start it with the number five. And what color is that number? <laughs> it's green, okay. Let's count together. I've got shamrocks here. One, two, three, four, five. Five green shamrocks, light and dark. 
you notice they aren't all the same green. Some are light, light, and some are very dark. Okay, next number, four. Let's count bunnies. One, two, three, four. Four little bunnies hopping in the park. What's the next number going to be? Three. Three tricky leprechauns. One, two, three. Three tricky leprechauns wearing green caps. Two butterflies. One, two. Two sparkly butterflies flitter and flap. And now, one, one beautiful rainbow. Do you see the green stripe in the rainbow? It's right in the middle there. One beautiful rainbow makes me want to sing. Now let's count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Hooray for spring. That's our celebration at the end. All right, are you ready to try it with me? We'll start down at five and we'll do a countdown and then we'll jump up and say hooray for spring. Here we go. Five green shamrocks, light and dark. Four little bunnies hopping in the park. Three tricky leprechauns wearing green caps. Two sparkly butterflies flitter and flap. One beautiful rainbow makes me want to sing. Five, four, three, two, one. Hooray for spring. Yay, good job. Well, since spring makes me want to sing and makes me feel happy, I think maybe this would be a great time to sing if you're happy and you know it. Do you know that song? Well, let me take my pieces down and we can do, we can count them off the flannel board and then we'll sing a song. One rainbow, two butterflies, one, two, three leprechauns, one, two, three, four bunnies, one, two, three, four, and five shamrocks. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so if we're gonna sing, if you're happy and you know it, you might wanna stand up and dance a little and get ready to jump at the hooray part. We're going to sing it with four verses. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. And then we'll stomp our feet for verse two and we'll shout hooray for verse three. That's where you can jump. And then we'll do all three things for verse four. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. All right, you ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. 
If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Hooray! If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp. Hooray! Now stretch your hands as high as they will go. Put your hands on your head. Put your hands on your shoulders. Put your hands together. Put your hands in your lap. Now I think you're ready to listen to us. It's, it's called the turnip. And it's a Russian folk tale. Let's get everything ready here. I'm going to need your help with this story because this turnip is going to require some pulling. So if you could pull along with me, that would be a big help. Whenever I say they pulled and pulled, you pull too, okay? Now, this is Djedushka. Djedushka is the grandfather. That's the Russian word for grandfather. Djedushka planted a turnip. It grew and grew and grew. And when it was big and ready to be picked, Djedushka went to pull it out of the ground. He pulled and pulled, but he couldn't pull it out. So he called Babushka, the grandmother. Babushka pulled Djedushka, Djedushka pulled the turnip. They pulled and pulled, but they couldn't pull it out. So they called their daughter Anushka. Anushka pulled Babushka, Babushka pulled Djedushka, Djedushka pulled the turnip. They pulled and pulled, but they couldn't pull it out. So they called their dog Katushka. There she is. Katushka pulled Anushka, Anushka pulled Babushka, Babushka pulled Djedushka, Djedushka pulled the turnip. They pulled and pulled, but they couldn't pull it out. So they called their cat, Natasha. Natasha pulled Katushka, Katushka pulled Anushka, Anushka pulled Babushka, Babushka pulled Djedushka, Djedushka pulled the turnip. They pulled and pulled. That turnip would not come out. The only creature left was their mouse, Ivana. So Ivana pulled Natasha, Natasha pulled Katushka, Katushka pulled Anushka, Anushka pulled Babushka, Babushka pulled Djedushka, Djedushka pulled the turnip. They pulled and pulled. They couldn't pull it out. What were they going to do? Well, along came a little tiny beetle and the beetle said, I'm big and stout. And the beetle grabbed on and pulled them all. And then they pulled it out. Here it comes. Oh my goodness, look at that turnip. <gasps> wow, it's so big. I can't believe there's such a gigantic turnip. No wonder they couldn't get it out of there. Is it green? Well, all the leaves at the top are green, all the parts that stick out of the ground. The part that was growing underground is purple. But that little beetle was on um, what it, they needed to get that last bit of pull and get that turnip out. Thanks for helping. I hope you liked that story. It's one of my favorites. I'll put all these guys away. And now I wanted to share with you something else that you might find when you're out and about in the springtime, taking a walk outside. Maybe if you're walking near a big puddle or a stream or a pond, you might see 
this green thing. It's green and it croaks and it likes to eat flies. Do you know what I'm talking about? Can you guess? It's a frog. Oh, wait, is this a frog? This certainly doesn't look like a frog and it's not even green. I said frogs were green, right? This is blue. It does have green eyes, but hmm, I wonder what happened. I, I thought I had a frog. Oh, guess what this is? It's actually a baby frog. A baby frog is a tadpole. It looks a lot different from a grown up frog. They swim in the water when they're little. Yeah, that's why they have this tail. And as they grow, they change. They grow legs and their tail disappears. And pretty soon, instead of a tadpole, you have a frog. Well, you didn't get to see that. Here's the tadpole. And it turns into a frog. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. And it hops away. That's pretty cool, isn't it? The tadpole into frog. Maybe you'd like to learn about how that happens. I have some books to show you um, a little later that you might want to check out from the library about frogs. But let's do a little song first about some frogs, five of them, green and speckled. Maybe you know this song. They're sitting on a log. So here's the log. And here is the pond, the pool, where they want to jump in to the water and get cool. Can you help me count these frogs? Let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five five green and speckled frogs. And here's how the words go. Five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Did you know frogs like bugs? Then they go yum, yum. You can rub your tummy. Yum, yum, like that. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool then there were four green speckled frogs, right? One, two, three, four left. And then we'll just keep counting down till they're all in the pool. All right. And oh, at the end, you get to do a frog sound like this. Lo, 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 or ribbit, ribbit, whatever you like. Are you ready? Let's sing it. Five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were four green speckled frogs. Boom, boom. Let's count just to be sure. One, two, three, four. Four green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were three green speckled frogs. Boom, boom. Should we count? One, two, three. Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were two green speckled frogs. Boom, boom. One, two. Two green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there was one green speckled frog. Boom, boom. Just one. It's going to be really fast. Are you ready? One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. She jumped into the pool where it was nice and cool. Then there were no green speckled frogs. Boom, boom. <laughs> Good job. That is a fun song. 
And I really like the CD by Raffi that has that song on it. If you're interested in getting some music from the library, look for that one. And speaking of things at the library, now it's time for me to share some ideas for you with you of some um, things you might want to request because even though we can't be together at the library right now, you can check out books and bring them home to enjoy. So um, please check out our website at hclibrary.org. You just need your library card barcode number and PIN to check out books and to use lots of e-resources on our website. And if you don't have a library card yet, just call the library and we can get you set up with one. All right, I'm going to share my screen so we can look at some book titles. Here are a bunch of books about green. Where is the Green Sheep by Mem Fox is a very fun book for identifying colors and counting. Um, green by Laura Vaccaro Seeger has all the different kinds of green you might see out in the world. It's a beautiful book. And Green Pants is a silly story about a boy who only wants to wear his green pants and nothing else. Green Wilma by Ted Arnold is even sillier about a girl who wakes up suddenly with a, with the, and finds that she is green and has a long tongue and wants to eat flies. I think she's a frog. Ah, check that one out. Here is a nonfiction book about how tadpoles turn into frogs with some really fantastic photographs. And another definition of green is things that have to do with making our planet healthy. And this is a really great book in told in with simple text in rhyme about how food waste can be made into renewable energy, green energy. So if that interests you and you want to share that with your child, take a look for Green Machine. Here are a couple of board books for the littlest ones who are learning to identify colors. Red Light, Green Light, and Blue Hat, Green Hat, which is a fun Sandra Boynton book. And if you're looking for some music, you can't do better than it. Um, it's about with the Muppets Green album, which uh, has the classic, it isn't easy being green. And finally, this wonderful picture book, Ribbit uh, by Joyce Hurley is all about frogs and how they move. So have fun with that one too. And while you're at our website, please check out the e-resources for kids. We have lots of fantastic resources you can access on your computer 24 hours a day for free. Um, so Tumble Book Library has picture books you can read on your screen and have them read out loud for your child, like what color is Caesar? or book flicks that pairs a fiction and nonfiction book together according to a theme. So here are two about spring. And then it's Spring by Julie Fogliano, which is just a beautiful picture book about the changes we see as springtime comes. And a, a nonfiction book, How Do You Know It's Spring? And then National Geographic Kids is a fantastic resource. Anytime you're looking for more information about the natural world, go to National Geographic Kids. You can find videos and photographs and books um, to read about just about any topic. So I looked up Tadpole and found this great book, Tadpole to Frog, that you could read on your screen. So let's come back together now to say goodbye with a wave run. Join me and just follow along. We're going to wave lots of different ways. Here we go. Wave high, up high. Wave low. I'm sad to say it's time to go. Wave your elbows. Wave your toes. Wave your tongue. Uh, wave your nose, like a little bunny. Wave your knees. Wave your lips. Blow a kiss with your fingertips. Wave your ears. I have to help mine. Wave your hair. Wave your belly and derriere. That's your bottom. You can wiggle like a, you're doing a hula hoop. Wave your chin. Wave your eyes. 
wave your hand and say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you again for joining me today. Um, if you have any questions or feedback on this class, please send us an email at askhcls at hclibrary.org. I'm going to put that address up here in just a second. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks again. I hope to see you soon. Bye.